Uh, I was just watching the replay of the Russell Gage injury just over and over trying to see as many angles as I can, as many photos as I can to see what happened. And I don't know, it looks, it looks like he received a blow to the side. There was an angle I saw, it looked like the blow came to the side of his neck. It went sideways and then front, like it rotated. So he could not move. It appeared he had issues trying to get up. And it looks like his right arm looked like it was almost paralyzed, but his right leg was moving a bit. And he was lifting his left leg and left arm, you know. It looked like it still had some movement. So, I mean, if I was to make, you know, differential diagnosis here, you know, I would include like a burner stinger injury. That would basically be like an injury to his brachial plexus due to the blow to the side of his neck, basically stretching the fibers in the brachial plexus. I mean, that looks like it could have been the case there. It could be whiplash I don't know maybe the angle that I saw was wrong and it was more of a forward neck injury so just like you know a whiplash that caused temporary inflammation you know maybe a cervical neck fracture cervical neck fracture would you know be cause for paralysis from the neck down and that'll be the worst so you know maybe it could be you know, um, herniation, cervical disc herniation. So those are like my top four there. You know, burn a finger injury in the cervical area causing some type of injury to the brachial plexus. Um, what else? I said a whiplash, cervical fracture in the neck or a cervical herniation. Whichever ends up being the diagnosis, the final diagnosis, of course, after imaging and assessments, you know, we just hope for a speedy recovery because I'm, you know, he already had an injury to his back before, you know, not just not too long ago. You know, he just got back on the field and, you know, football, you know, it's a contact sport, a very dangerous contact sport, as we're seeing more and more these days. You know, it's a very high risk sport, so to speak. So, you know, hopefully it's nothing serious and that it's just temporary and he'll be back on the field, you know, after therapy and that he can walk on his own and there's no paralysis going on here. But we'll just, you know, keep him in our prayers. You know, first responders <laughs> did the right thing, which is stabilize the neck. You know, you want to make sure that you stabilize and that once you have any person with any type of like MSK, musculoskeletal injury, you want to stabilize. In this case, he had a neck injury. You don't want to move him at all. You want to keep him still, stabilize the neck, put him on the backboard and transport immediately. The stabilization is the key thing here to help prevent any further agitation and you don't want to aggravate the injury, you know, because aggravation, let's say he's not paralyzed and you aggravate the injury, it could lead to paralysis. So stabilization was accomplished. He's being transported. Next step is imaging to know and see what exactly happened. But I said the lead diagnosis in my differential right now if it was a blow to the side then it's a burner stinger and brachial plexus was irritated and he will recover let's hope that's the case let me know what you guys think what did you see was it a side blow was it a front blow i mean let's help each other out here let's analyze all right Again, thoughts and prayers to the Bucks, Russell Gage, his family. Full recovery is our hope. All right.
Later.